Hi, I'm Barb and I'm Alex and we're Enchantarium. In today's video, we'll be making Stormy, the Witch of Storms, as a part of a huge Halloween collab. Tune in for the Halloween doll customizing madness and check out other spooky Halloween dolls made by amazing doll artists. Our favorite cartoon as children was the Winx Club. If you follow us on Instagram, you may have seen our renditions of the protagonists of the series, six fairies named Musa, Flora, Tecna, Layla, or Aisha, depending on where you watch the show, Stella, and Bloom. It's been about a year since we made these dolls, hence why their creation was not recorded for this channel, and we've been waiting for the opportunity to revisit the topic and make the tricks. Three powerful witches and enemies of the wings. As you may have noticed from the title of this video, the opportunity has presented itself, and we're kicking off the three-part series with neither of our favorite of the three, Stormy. For this project, we're using a Raven Queen doll from Ever After High. This one has a pretty smiling face, but the body is from the Magic Arrow series, and her arms are not articulated and she has molded clothing. So we're going to swap this body for a regular Raven's body later. We have to separate the head from the body, and I'm boiling some water and pouring it into a mug. This is definitely too much water, a doll head won't fit in it. Now it's perfect, so I'm dunking the doll in the boiling water. After one minute of the spa treatment, the head is squishy enough to easily put it from the neck pack. Please don't drink it by accident. When the head is dry, I'm cutting her hair as close to the head as possible. Then. I'm removing the glue and the rest of the hair from inside using scissors and tweezers. There was a lot of glue inside, but it wasn't that bad to pull it out. Let's grab our nameless bottle full of acetone and wipe the factory makeup with a cotton pad. The same goes for the paint on the skull. I'm painting the head in light blue and purple to match the color of her future hair. To reroot this doll, I'm using Bluebell Wood Nylon Blend and Purple Heart Nylon from Retro Dolls UK. I'm taking a small strand of the hair, wrapping it up around my finger, threading the rerouting needle and then poking it to an existing hole in the head. I blend some of the hair together to reach the fading effect from purple to blue. Some of the footage is gone, so I can't show you how the final reroot looks, but I filled the part with blue hair and added some white strands in the front. Sewing for this doll was, as per usual, a very painful process because the first outfit failed me completely. I had a sketch, a vision, I've sewn everything together, recorded a nice and simple tutorial, made the pattern, and it was underwhelming to say the least. Not witchy enough, not stormy enough, it was back to the drawing board. I remembered the heat transfer vinyl we had from Arteza and a new idea sparked, so I decided to go for a simpler dress, but zhuzh it up with a printed design. I started by having Alex make the design on top of the pattern piece and printed it out on regular paper. I taped it all over to make it a bit stronger, as it's going to be my template. The design has two layers, so I did that on both of the layers. <laughs> Then I took an X-Acto knife and a cutting mat and carefully cut out all of the colored pieces. Now I'm going to trace them out on the vinyl. I taped everything in place so it wouldn't shift and I'm not applying a lot of pressure, just enough to cut the vinyl and not all the way through the sticky backing. I weeded out the vinyl that I didn't want to transfer. Then, according to the instructions, I ironed it onto a piece of black fabric. After that cooled a bit, I peeled off the backing, aligned my second layer and pressed it again. I very satisfyingly peeled the backing again and I was super excited about the result. I cut out the pieces including a fully printed piece and got to work. The pattern is linked below if you want to make the dress yourself. I hemmed the front piece by hand, as the glue trick didn't work this time, because the fabric was too stiff. I top stitched the bra part to the front piece. Next, I took the back pieces and aligned them right sides together and sewn in the side seams. To my delight, I was able to switch to my sewing machine for that. 
I top stitched the seam allowance towards the back of the dress so it would lay flatter. I hemmed the bottom of the dress, but I didn't like the finish. So I top stitched a ruffled ribbon along that edge. I closed the dress about 5 cm from the bottom and added snaps above that. I realized I didn't want to hem the printed part of the top, so I cut it a bit shorter and only hemmed the black parts up top. I've also sewn her a cape, similar to the one I made for Irmina, our last Christmas doll. And since I've only slightly modified Requiem Art Design's, well, design, I'm not going to be sharing the pattern, but I highly encourage you to try their patterns, since they're not very expensive and are written way more clearly than mine. Let's paint her face. I'm starting with delicate blushing on cheeks and nose. At this point, I didn't know what kind of makeup I was going to make, so I started like always with blushing and sketch of the eyes. I'm drawing her eyes with a black pencil and making her brows with a purple pencil. Then I'm adding more colors to the face, starting with light blue in the irises and coloring lips with pastels. Eye makeup is my second favorite part of the face up and I'm starting with an eyeliner and a pastel eyeshadow. My first thought was dramatic, stage-like, smoky eye makeup with bold eyeliner and you can see that I started from that, but I thought Alex, you do this kind of makeup on every doll recently. So I added more red on her cheeks and cheekbones to look even more dramatic. I thought she could have lightning somewhere on her face and decided to draw them around the eyes. I'm starting with red, violet and purple watercolor pencils. I had problems with building white pencil on her face, so I'm switching to acrylics and painting her whites of the eyes. I'm also painting the irises with really light blue paint and drawing the pupils with a black pencil. Then I'm making some more eye details like waterline and I'm defining irises with acrylics and pencils. I'm adding silver eyeshadow and white hairs on the eyebrows to lighten the makeup a little bit. This time I wanted to do different blinks in the eyes, so I'm painting some individual white dots on the top of the iris. She needs some more details in the eyebrow area, like white spot under the brow to give an illusion of a third dimension, and more color on the brow. Like always, I'm painting white lashes next to the black lashes, but this time there's no black lashes. The last eye detail is the tiny pink dot inside the pupil. Now it's the time to define the lightnings with silver acrylic paint. Two coats of silver pearlix powder on her cheeks and the face up is done. I took the body from another raven doll, this time with full articulation and normal skin. I'm giving her a basic blushing on the knees, elbows, hips, belly and chest. Then I'm starting to paint her arms and legs with pastels. I wanted to achieve the red fade from fingers to elbows, but we decided that she will look better with natural fingers, so I'm painting it to look like a glove. I think it's a nice tribute to Stormy's original design from the first season. After a few layers of pastels and MSC, I have a red fade and I'm drawing some lightnings with purple pencil and then painting them silver to look like actual lightnings and match the makeup. This is what it looked like after I finished. Welcome to my Hazardous Materials Lab. In this episode, we'll be working with epoxy resin. I mixed the resin according to the ratio listed on the label, and Alex started adding some alcohol inks to it. The color wasn't turning out right. We added some perlic pigments, and it still looked like mud, but very hopeful, I poured the resin into the mold which I actually made out of silicon and 3D printed models of lightnings that I made in Fusion 360. It was a disaster from start to finish. Needless to say, the color didn't come out right, the perlex sunk to the bottom, so we redid the pouring. This time being more careful of the color mixing and the pouring. The color turned out a bit red, but when put against a light source, looks perfect. Then it was time to style the hair. I used narrow straws 
and a lot of pins and curled the hair away from the face. I like working on slightly damp hair, so I bowl washed it first to set the part line, curled, boil washed again and let them dry completely. Now that the hair has dried, I'm removing the pins and the straws. The curls held really nicely, but they require some trimming, so I'm cutting the straight ends with scissors. After that, I'm splitting the curls to two or three parts for better visual effects and more volume. Time for accessories! Raven's necklace will be perfect from my idea on how to attach the resin lightning to the doll. I took a wire and bent it like this in shape of the doll's back. I'm covering the wire with tin foil to save on weight and materials. To make it solid, I'm going to use epoxy sculpt, which I find the best for this kind of projects. When the clay is cured, I'm gluing it to the necklace and painting it black. With the help of a hot glue gun, I'm attaching the resin lightnings at the back of the doll to form some sort of demonic stormy wings. Because the back is not the prettiest part, I'm adding some resin accessories to cover the ends of lightnings and the glue. I chose the heart, the moon and the little dot. To further witchify the look, I'm going to make her some long nails. Using my own nail gel, I started drawing lines on a piece of foil to see if I could make some doll nail extensions. They all turned out different, so I resorted to some plasticine and my dotting tool to make a mold of sorts. I filled the cavities with the gel and cured that and it worked better. Using the same nail gel, I'm dabbing a little bit on the doll's hand, putting on the tip and curing that again. Lastly, I added some red gel polish to finish off the lock. I also wanted to give Stormy some kind of magic weapon, so I once again resorted to Fusion 360 and modeled the Storm Staff. And then I just took it out of the screen. I already applied some changes to this stuff. I decorated it with a wire, attached a spiky end from resin, and added some texture using hot glue. First I'm painting it with silver paint, but then I decided to make some fade from black to silver at the top and from silver to red at the bottom. Using the glue gun I added a resin moon, dot and the crystal. After some dry brushing with silver paint and gluing some gems, the stuff is finished. Let's move on to the coat. It looks a little bit plain, so I'm going to paint some storm clouds on the back. I'm starting with purple, white and blue paint trying to stick with the color palette of our doll. After detailing the clouds with pink, red and black, I'm painting some silver lightnings. For her shoes, we chose Raven's shoes, because they won't cover our doll's painted feet. They are actually pretty close to what I have in mind and I just want to bring out the details so I'm painting them with purple parallax powder and when they're dry, I'm dry brushing them black. As a last detail, I'm gluing some rhinestones here and there. This is how she turned out. There were some setbacks, but we made it. I like the variety of extras that we made for this doll. We can style her with her attributes like the staff and the lightning wings, or put on her cloak and make her more mysterious. Remember, this video is a part of the Mega Halloween collaboration, and there's plenty of other Halloween customs to see. Check out videos by Tendance, Blank Space Dolls, Characters Factory, Delightful, Dolls Brand New Look, H. Ali Crafts, Hexgen, his name is Akin, Kairos Workshop, Moonlight Jewel, My Minimon, Poppin Atelier, Scariosities, Sky the Golden, The Doll Fairy, The Dolly Geek, and Tiamat Creations for more Halloween goodness. Have you seen the Wings Club? Who is your favorite character from the show? 
Do you prefer fairies or witches? Tell us in the comments down below. Make sure to follow us on Instagram for some sneak peeks and subscribe for future videos. Have an enchanted day and we'll see you next time. Boy! <laughs> <laughs> this time with full out f This time with full articulation. <laughs> this time with full out full of little. I also wanted to give Stormy some kind of magic weapon. Magic weapon. <laughs>